In this video, I'm going to show you how to control an RGB LED light strip with a Raspberry Pi. Here is a list of items we need for this project. A Raspberry Pi, a breadboard, three in-channel power MOSFETs, an RGB LED light strip, jumper wires, and a 12 volt power supply. Fritzing is an open source piece of software that will help me explain what I am doing and how these components work. Fritzing allows you to drag and drop components onto a canvas and wire connections between those components. Here is a diagram of everything we will be working with today. First up, the Raspberry Pi. If you are new to working with the Raspberry Pi, I encourage you to go watch my Raspberry Pi 3B Plus Getting Started video, where I cover unboxing the Raspberry Pi and installing Raspbian. Once you've watched that video, you can come back here and continue along. The LED light strip requires 12 volts and the Raspberry Pi can only output 5 volts. Thus, we need an external power supply to use the lights. A word of caution here. If you watch my Raspberry Pi project's intro video, you'll know that electronics, circuits, etc. are a mystery to me. My goal is not to teach you what these things are, but to explain them as I understand them and show you what they can do for us in a project. Now back to our power supply. In the diagram, it's simply called source. The power or electrical current flows from one end, typically labeled as positive, to the other end, traditionally marked as negative. The positive negative terms are a bit misleading, and there's a lot of history there. Think of it like there's a bunch of people marching in one direction out of the source and eventually returning to the source in an endless loop. That's a circuit. Next up is the breadboard. A breadboard is a device used for prototyping circuits. It's solderless, so we can just push components into it instead of soldering them together. But how does it work? Along the edges are two bus strips for power. One the supply voltage, often shown in red with a plus sign. The other the ground, shown in blue or black with a negative sign. Each bus is a row of contact points running from right to left. In the middle of the board is a gap. The gap isolates the two sides of the breadboard. Between the outer buses and the gap are the terminal strips. These strips are isolated in columns from front to back, separated and isolated by the gap. The positive connection from the power supply is connected to the red bus, and the blue bus is connected to the negative terminal. We also connect one of the ground pins for the Raspberry Pi to the blue bus. Continuing the marching people analogy, assuming we ran a wire between the two buses, the people would march out of the source, down the red bus, and then turn and march down the blue bus back to the source. Next we have the RGB LED light strip. There are four wires or connections to the strip. One is for power, which is connected to the red bus on the breadboard, another for the red color, one for the green color, and finally one for the blue color. Let's simplify this first. In our endless marching people example, we place a single red LED in the path. As the people march from the source, through the LED, and back to the source, they cause the LED to emit light. If the connection from the LED back to the source is missing or broken, the people cannot march and the LED won't light up. With the light strip, we have not one, but three paths back to the source, one for each color. When all three colors are shining, we see mostly white light. So how do we control our marching people so we can have just red light, or maybe just purple? This is where the in-channel MOSFETs come into play. The MOSFET is a particular type of transistor, and a transistor is essentially a switch triggered by electric signals. Using this, we can control the marching people. The MOSFET has three connections. On the left is the gate, in the middle is the drain, and on the right is the source. The gate is closed by default and is connected to one of the pins on the Raspberry Pi. The drain pin is connected to one of the colors of the light strip, and the source pin is connected to the blue bus on the breadboard. When we tell the Raspberry Pi to send power to the pin, the MOSFET gate is opened, allowing the people to march through the drain and return to the source. We can actually control how far open the gate is, thus controlling how intense the color coming from the light strip is. That's it, the completed design for the project. I actually recorded the video of wiring up everything myself first, but the end result is the same.
With everything wired up, we plug in the power supply and boot the Raspberry Pi and... nothing happens. Which at least nothing blew up, so that's a bonus. Remember I said the MOSFET gates are closed by default? So in order to make the LEDs light up, we need to tell the Raspberry Pi to open those gates. We'll use the Pi GPIO software to control the pins the MOSFET gates are connected to. First, we make sure we have all the software needed to install Pi GPIO. Then download, compile, and install Pi GPIO itself. Now we should be able to control the light strip. First, start Pi GPIO by typing sudo pygpiod. Now let's make the light strip red. Type pigs p17255. This tells the Raspberry Pi to set pin 17 to an intensity of 255. Pin 22 is green and pin 24 is blue. You could use any value between 0 and 255 to control how intense the color is. Well, that's it for this video. If you enjoyed it, please give it a thumbs up and share it with friends. If you've not already subscribed to the channel, please do as there will be more Raspberry Pi videos coming soon.